So in this module, we're going to be looking at communities, biomes, and ecosystems for module three. Now, in lesson one, we're going to be talking about community ecology. And in community ecology, we are looking at the living things that make up an ecosystem. So for our focus question for lesson one, what is an ecological community? So different ecosystems have unique communities. So biologists study the interactions between organisms and their environment. So we have a whole bunch of different communities that we're going to look at. So the first one is a coral reef. Now, coral reefs maintain a diverse, uh, diverse underwater ecosystem. You can see, look at all the different living organisms that exist here. You can see there are so many different types of fish, so many different types of coral, and all of them are living uh, in this community together. Another ecosystem we have is a desert e community. Now in the desert community, we have the South American gray fox. And you can see this is in a very dry and arid place in the Atacama Desert. You can see cacti and you don't see as much living stuff. Now, even though it's a, it has different factors, you can still see there are living things in this community. The next one is a tropical rainforest community. Now, parrots are found in most tropical and subtropical regions, but you can see this is much more thick, much more lush, and you can see them feeding on the tree in this location. The last one we have are woodland communities. Now, in this case, we have a beaver interacting with the trees. And again, the beaver fell trees in order to form the basis of dams. Their homes, called lodges, are inside the dam, which they enter through underwater entrances that their predators cannot access. So they use the, what is found in their surroundings in order to make their community. So communities vary depending on their location. So abiotic factors and biotic factors. So let's take a look at for this chapter and let's think about what are the differences between a desert community and a polar community? What kind of communities do you live in? Is it rural, urban, or suburban? And as you think about these questions, list what you know about community and what you would like to know. So take a moment and write what you know about communities and what you want to know about these biological communities in this chapter. All right, so a bio biological community is a group of interacting populations that occupy the same area at the same time. So a community includes other people, plants, animals, bacteria, and even fungi. So when we're talking about, when we're talking about a biologic community, we're looking at all of the living things. And here's the key, only looking at living things in that particular area and how these living things interact. So again, biologic communities are just looking at the living interactions that we see. So organisms living in the same ecosystem depend on one another for survival. So all the animals in a community are depending on one another in order for whether it's food, whether it's some type of symbiotic relationship, but they also rely on abiotic factors. So if we remember, biotic are the living factors that we have in our ecosystem. Abiotic are looking at the non-living things in our ecosystem. So these limiting factors, biotic and abiotic factors, can influence an organism's ability to survive or even to reproduce. So if we take a look, how might abiotic factors affect a community? So if we're taking a look here, right, and we draw a line separating these two different types of communities, right? So on the left, we're going to have our normal community, right? So if you think about your community that you live, right, maybe in your community, you have all of these trees, okay? So this is a type of living thing that exists when normal environmental conditions are present. Maybe we're going to have grasses, okay, and plants growing 
and in these different types of conditions. So in these, maybe we have some bugs flying around, okay? Or even a bird flying, okay? So these are different interactions that we have. Maybe if you also wanna look at it, we have some bushes, okay? Some shrubs, things along those lines. Or even, maybe even we look at the fungi that could potentially grow on the forest floor. So these are living things that interact in our ecosystem depending on what is surviving there. So in this case, our abiotic factors that are going to support this are gonna be rainfall, right? Without rain and without uh, pre precipitation, none of this stuff will exist. So what happens if we go through a period of a drought where there is no precipitation that is forming? All right, so most likely the same type of thing, but in this case, this is kind of a bad picture, but you get the idea. Our tree dies, right? And our bush dies as well, right? Because there's no rainfall. All of the plants and everything kind of disappear. So when we don't have any rain, you can see how this one abiotic factor can severely affect the whole ecosystem. Now, organisms can adapt to live in conditions in which they live. So like one of the, uh, in the picture here, you can see we have a camel, which is well adapted to survive in the desert, as well as palm trees, which are also adapted to survive in very low rainfall conditions. So let's take a look at two different animals here. So the first one is a wolf, right? And a wolf lives in very cold climate. This is also why wolves have a very heavy fur coat, which enables it to survive in these harsh winters. This is an adaption that that organism has that survives in its particular climate. A cactus is another one. A cactus has a very thick outside layer that helps trap in water. So it helps it retain water in these very dry conditions. So depending on which factors that are present, organisms can survive in some ecosystems, but not in others, all right? So let's take a look at how are organisms changing in our conditions. So now we're gonna be looking at ecological succession. Now, ecosystems are dynamic, and this means that they are constantly changing, whether it's through weather conditions, forest fires, just a tree falling in general, amount of sunlight, any type of community is constantly changing. Now the change that occurs in an ecosystem when one community replaces another because of the changing abiotic and biotic conditions, this is what we call ecological succession. So when again, we are looking at both conditions here, abiotic as well as biotic factors, and when those two things change, how is it going to change our ecosystem? So one way we can look at this is ecosystems are changing and they might be modified in very small ways. So such as a tree falling in the forest or in large ways, such as an entire forest burning. Now forest fires can be even, uh, necessary for a forest community and forest fires return nutrients to the soil and some plants such as the fireweed have seeds that will not sprout until they are heated by fire. So some ecosystems depend on fires to get rid of debris. And if fires are uh, prevented, debris builds up to the point where the next fire might burn the shrubs and trees completely. So a forest fire might change the habitat so dram dramatically that some people can no longer survive, but other species might thrive in these new conditions. So for example, if you see this picture right here, you can see there's big giant trees, um, a lot of low shrubs. Now, as a forest fire goes through, you can see how those environmental conditions can drastically change. And now, new organisms are able to come in and colonize this particular area. So this idea of changing conditions is something called succession. So the establishment of a community in an area of exposed rock that does not have any topsoil is called primary succession. So in this case, this would be like a, a solidified lava flow on a cliff. We are starting with bare rock. So 
In this case, we're starting with bare rock, which just simply means that we have no soil. So the reason that primary succession takes so long is that there's no soil present and it takes a long time to develop that. So primary succession usually occurs very slowly at first and then pr proceeds to uh, progress in a normal fashion. So again, we're starting here with bare rock. Okay, in our bare rock, in our bare rock, we are looking at what uh, really nothing here. So right, when we're looking at bare rock, there's nothing that can grow here. So in order for something to grow we need to start breaking that down in the soil. So the pioneer species called lichens comes in and with its, acidic, uh, its acidity, it starts breaking down that into soil. Once there's a little bit of soil present, mosses start to develop and then herbs and weeds begin to form in that newly developed soil. We then enter into our intermediate stages where we start to see grasses begin to form in this particular habitat. Then shrubs and shade and tolerant trees and then eventually we go into our mature community. We're looking at shade intolerant trees. So you're probably asking, how is this soil formed? Now, usually lichens begins to grow on the rocks and breaks down the rock by producing a weak acid. So with this formation of the soil, new organisms are then able to appear. But lichens are called pioneer species because they are among the first organism to appear. And when lichens dies off, it even produces more organic material for this whole thing to progress. So whenever you see this green stuff on rocks, kind of looks like this. It's actually an algae and a fungus uh, symbiotic relationship. But what they do is they start breaking down that rock into organic matter as soil. Now a mature community can eventually develop from bare rock and the stable mature community that results when there is little change in the composition of the species is called a climax community. So in this mature community, when we have reached our climax is when there is very little change that is occurring. So the formation of soil is the first step in primary succession. And once that soil formation starts, it then progresses to our climax community. Now in the temperate deciduous forest of where we live, this would be um, like oak, hickory, uh, maple trees, those hardwood trees. So let's take a look at um, primary uh, succession and let's kind of see how this goes. So first thing, we're starting with bare rock. There is no organic molecules that exist in this particular area. So then we have our pioneer species, occur uh, pioneer species coming in. So in this case, when we're looking at our pioneer species, we are looking at our lichens and our lichens comes in with its weak um, its weak acid and starts to break down that material okay so the next step that we first so once we have developed once we have developed that uh, base layer of soil we start to see our mosses coming in again these are still primary or excuse me pioneer species they're just a little bit later on in the process. The first one's the lichens, then our mosses. So after the mosses come in, we start to develop a little bit of a base of soil. We start to see herbs and weeds. Again, still a pioneer species, still very early on in the succession process. Okay, then in our, we start entering into our intermediate stages, which form grasses. Okay, these grasses, they require a little bit more topsoil. And again, as we progress, more soil starts to appear, which means more complex organisms can start coming in, like shrubs. In this case, we start seeing our shrubs uh, start to come in and start establishing in that particular area. As we go even further along, this, um, we start seeing our shade and tolerant trees, like pines, hickories, immature oaks, okay? And they're out trying to outcompete each other for that resource. Then finally, we enter our climax community, which shows, in this case, our climax community is our very stable plants. So oaks, hickories, black walnuts, maple, tulips, poplars, and beeches, all big giant trees that are occurring. Now, this whole process takes upwards of 250 plus years. 
So it's not something that occurs directly overnight, but it takes a large amount of time to develop this. So remember, the term climax may be somewhat misleading. Scientists now think that a true climax community may not exist because ecosystems are dynamic and ever-changing. So what are some changes that might occur in a stable, mature community? You could be thinking about trees falling, right? When a tree falls, it, develop, it creates new spaces for organisms to occur. Um, plants getting eaten. Okay, forest fires. Logging, all right? All of these things are examples of how this ecosystem can slightly change and continue to be dynamic. Now, the other type of succession that we have is secondary succession. And secondary succession, we look at disturbances such as fire, flood, human activity, or even a wind storm, storm that can disrupt the community. And after a disturbance, new species of plants and animals might occupy that habitat. So if you take notice in uh, secondary succession, you notice that this process is a lot quicker. So you're starting at year zero and the mature forest only takes about seven, 75 years. But again, the reason for the reason for this is simply because we are starting with soil. So because we're starting with soil, it's not going to take a large amount of time in order to produce that. Secondary succession is the orderly and predictable change that takes place after a community of organisms has been removed, but the soil has remained intact. So again, same thing, same sort of progression. It's just that the difference is we are doing this in a quicker ma manner because the soil is already there. So we have some sort of disturbance and within one to two years, we're gonna see the annual plants. Grasses and herbs are gonna come in in about three to four years. Shrubs, about four to 15. Pines, about five to 15. Young oaks and hickories, about 10 to 30. And then pines die and the oaks and hickories begin to take over until eventually we go to our mature forest. Again, secondary succession has the soil in place. So we're gonna look at a forest fire here and we're gonna look at how this forest fire progresses. All right, so let's take a look at how secondary succession goes through here. So we're gonna start with a disturbance like a forest fire that comes through. But again, notice soil is still present. So charred trees after a forest fire. <clears throat> so within a few years, what we're gonna see is because the soil's already there, we're gonna see annual plants, grasses, and herbs, all right? Then the shrubs start to move in. And again, you'll notice that these charred trees are beginning to get broken down. We then move into the pines, which are our, sh uh, our fast growing tree, okay? Then we enter into our young oaks and hickory forest where they then begin to take control where the pines die off and outcompete those organisms. And then finally we enter into our mature forest. Again, this only takes about 75 years compared to our 250 in the other one. So what's the end point of this whole process? So ecological succession is a complex process that involves many factors. And the end point of succession after the disturbance cannot be predicted. A natural community or con uh, continuous change at a different rate and the process of succession is extremely slow. So ecological succession is not always as cut and dry as you want to see in this whole process. So if we take a look at this in the summary of for lesson one, a biological community is a group of interacting populations that occupy the same area at the same time. Ecological succession occurs when one community replaces another as a result of changing abiotic and biotic factors. Primary succession occurs on areas of exposed rock or bare sand, no soil. Communities progress until there is little change in the composition of the species, which is our climax community. 
and secondary succession occurs as a result of a disturbance of a mature forest. So hopefully, hopefully this helps you out with uh, community ecosystems or, or uh, biological communities. And again, we're, we talked about how these communities change as well as what is found there. So hopefully, hopefully this helps you out. Again, this is Mr. O'Brien signing off.